They do some beautiful work with wood in Japan, like the stuff, the things they make with no nails, you know, some beautiful yes, woodworking yes. there, you know, they well, know they, good they, wood. They, they decimated the forest of the Philippines. And no, that's a shame. That was a shame. They raped the tree, the Philippine forest. Even the cabinets in your, in your kitchen here, the scores. That's two goss wood, too. Now, where did you find, did you have that made, or? That was handmade, all handmade from wood that I bought, Mark. I Whoa. bought that wood, and I had carpentry. Now, this is becoming a dead a dead issue because they can't get this wood anymore. Very few carpenters have the knowledge and the technology, the technical know, know how to put these together. This is two goss wood. What I like about this, John, is it's it's the right level to get in and out of it. Like most cabinets are above your head, you gotta, yes, you yes. can't see what's in there, and you you got it. I had to perfect. raise this up because this here cabinet was a little lower, to, but to get this here beautiful. Solid this, this cabinet. Now, where did you buy this at? I bought this here to go and on. From all the people that usually die and they're, they're selling these artifacts. But I love these things. People are not interested in a lot of this stuff, Mark. Do you understand? Yeah. The beauty of this wood is something to behold. Do you understand? I do. This wood is something that will never come back again. When you look at all these here, Look at this. Look at the carvings in here. I want you to try to feel them and look at them. Now, was this car? Was it made in the Philippines? This is Filipino. No kidding. So I had no idea there were things like this here. Well, here, here. You just take it out like this. You see? Wow. This is that. All the cabinetry in this thing, Mark. You cannot get this wood anymore. You understand? It's gone. This wood is a thing of the smell. The smell, the essence of that wood. Mm. I want you to smell it. Oh, smell. yeah. It smells See, wonderful. This is something of the past. This is two glass, too. Mm. And uh, these chairs are very heavy. They're almost 100 pounds. They're made of two glass mm. wood. And this is another wood, Mark, that you. This is called uh, Makuno. Is this Makuno? No, two two glass. Yeah. Now, where's the Makuno? Is this Makuno? I want to see a Makuno wood. I want to show Mark Makuno. This is a beautiful wood, too. This is a Philippine mahogany wood. And the unique thing on this is that the tree trunk has a base. Oh, yeah. One entire trunk, Mark. Wow. Can you see that? Yeah, That's I do. very heavy. They had to dig that out from, from into the swamp area where it came from. This is a board. This is one of the finest woods in the Philippine world. It's called, it's called uh, Makuno. Mm. And it's a black, well, almost like it's a black ebony if you shine it, it's mm. more blackish. Mm. Very heavy. This wood is a chopping board. Wow. <laughs> feels like iron. This wood sinks, Mark. It will, it'll go down in the water and won't float. It feels like a piece of iron. No bugs can penetrate that. It feels Amazing. like iron. Mark wow. Uno. And wow. this was stripped away, too. This is one of these. This and this are probably at the top of the Philippines, the best in the, some of the best in the world. It's amazing you found all this stuff, John. I didn't even know oh, these Mark, things. Been know, it for two years. I've never seen anything like I, this. The Coca-Cola culture did taught me one thing, but I did learn another thing when I traveled the world, around the world, for several times, and I did find a lot of interesting things that uh, that made me realize that there are quality and things of essence in this mm. world that we should be aware of, others should be aware of it too, it's not ignorant. But mm. well, don't you have other treasures you've collected, like stored in other, in other islands and other places? You were telling me about some antiques that you've, you've got. Uh, yes, Mark, I do have that. I do have that and I want it. I, I could share it with you. The other thing, I'm going to get you that book later, that, that book on the Negrito. I want you to see that. Mm. And also this wood here, which is the uh, the two goss wood, and you can feel the weight of the two goss too. Oh yeah, that's, that's heavy the, too. That's this the, the table there, the two goss, the chair. It's so the, beautiful. The Makuno, the black wood, like an ebony. This is the mm. uh, a mahogany too of the Philippines. These were all stripped out by the Jap, the Japanese. Mm. They took it out. They raped the Philippine forest years ago. Mm. And, Poor Philippines was on its knees. You understand? Yeah, I do. And uh, well, you think some of these trees are coming back? I know, like in Valencia, well, they've got those. Well, slowly, but uh, they're they're uh, it's very hard because the poor people 
the population's increasing and they cut trees down for, mm. for firewood to cook. Mm. And uh, there, a lot of the erosion is taking place because they don't have vast resources of coal or oil and mm. things like that. Now what about the giant trees in Valencia Market, those great big trees? What kind of trees are those, do you know? In the Valencia Market? You no, know, they go all the way around the square, the great big huge these trees. Are the U, these are the uh, acacia trees. Oh, acacia trees. They tree. were planted by the Spanish. Oh, they the Spanish were. They were here for almost 500 years. So these trees go back probably two, 200 years or more. Well, the beautiful These trees are, beautiful are huge. Trees. Now, if you walk up here one or two blocks up and go from the police station, go over about a block, you'll find one area that's fenced off. And if you look in there, there's huge trees that have never been cut. Whoever owns that land has left it as it used to be hundreds of years back. I have to go that's check that good, out. A good area to look, take pictures of those huge trees, native, and... Uh, to the area that we come from mm. here in Valencia. Mm. But these trees, the Balayo, mm. the Macuno, the Tugas, these are very rare now because they've cut down mm. all the big ones and they helicopter mm. over it and then they cut them illegally. They look over and cut them at night and then they get them out piece by piece, you see, because mm. it's illegal law. It's terrible. But years ago when mm. I was here, back in the 60s, Mark, they used to load them up in the Agusan River, up in, up in the Mindanao, and up there down in Mindanao. And the Japanese uh, lumber ships would come in and they stay outside at daytime, and then as nightfall comes, they come into shore. And then they would bring the illegal logs out of these barges, these huge uh, Loan, Mapuno, Tugas, Bulayo, and uh, Ipil, and uh, there were many that I can. Mm. My mom. And they would load them and send them up to Japan. And once in a while, they said, "You got get me the good, get me that that thing that I want." And they would bring him a monkey-eating eagle. So the Japanese come, the captain of those uh, lumber ships, they would get a Philippine, yeah, the Phil the Philippine eagle, eagle from yeah. Mindanao, the Upper Agusan area, yeah. which is one of the rarest birds in the world. It is the greatest eagle, and they would smuggle it on the ship, right? They bring it to Tokyo, and they would get five thousand dollars from that from a rich businessman or the owner of the Yellow Cab Company in Tokyo. Mm. He had one. So these are the the days of your mm. that uh, they raped and took out many of the. And when was that going on? Before World War II? During World War II? After World War II. After World War II. After okay, because interesting. When the Americans were here, we more or less kept others out of here. We mm. occupied this country till 1946. So, but the Japanese uh, came in right after the war. As soon as they could get up a little bit, they sent their ships in here if they weren't whaling. And uh, they came in here and they knew that it was open picking. And they just decimated the natural resources here. Uh -huh. And, uh, but their treasures like the national bird, the monkey eating eagle, they're slowly trying to bring it back, but they killed Hmm. Many, many hundreds of them years hmm. ago. Back what about this painting here? I love that painting. This is a painting. This is a very good, a very good painting. It's abstract. And, uh, Reminds me of Jackson Pollock's work, abstract yes, expressionism. This, this painting, I have to guess, do some research on it. When I had it at my uh, business up in San Francisco, there, I, I came across, I came onto this painting, and uh, I acquired it from. From a, from a man that uh, was going out of business, he was passing mm. away, he had cancer. So you bought it in California then? I bought it in California. Mm. And uh, I've been told that it is a known painting and it has great qualities to it. Yeah, you know, I love the it. First one was, uh, mm. And that's a little painting of a, of yeah. a street uh, girl just walking on the street in Singapore. Mm. That's the charge at the sun pole. That's Remington, that's one of the uh, authentic posters of Remington, that's the, mm. uh, you know, Frederick Remington, oh, yeah, yeah. the great uh, American Indian, mm. artist of the West. Mm. Now, John, you, you've had your house up for sale for, what, yeah. a couple years? So it's no more now. I've taken it more or less out. Oh, you have? I was going to say, what are you, how are you going to... Where am I going to go? That's what I was I thinking. I can't go back to New York or I can't go to Washington, D.C. Well, if there wasn't COVID, where would you go? Like, did you have if a plan? There was no COVID? It's a good question. I believe if there was no COVID mark, I believe I'd like to go to the Patagonia down to. That's Patagonia. beautiful there. I've been there. Yeah. 
down, down the, the tip of South America. Yeah, I was there before. I like it, the Ushuaia area, Ushuaia. Mm. And then along the west coast of South America, with, uh, along the Chilean frontier. Someone just told me today that to Chile the is a good place to go. I'm sorry? Just today, I had two people well, email me and tell me that Chile was also a good place. So You're I'm the third one. And, and nobody's ever told me that before. I, I just heard it today. It's unusual. Three people. But you never asked me until today. But yeah. However, it would be around the Perito Moreno Glacier, which is on the Chilean plate okay. in Chile. It's one of the last uh, active glaciers in the world. And I don't believe it's receding. And it's near the Black Glacier that has it black from the soil mm. and the, uh, the moraine there. And you've been there? Yes, I yeah. have. Wow. In fact, I... Uh, I had seeds of, an app, of apples that were brought over by Spanish missionaries. 1500s, they, they came down that far, and unfortunately, they were taken away from me by the agricultural department years ago when I tried to bring them and get them to reproduce. These apples were so delicious. They were an original apple. Out of all the varieties of apples, we get these factory apples I know. the same size. They're pesticide laden. And the taste is, it's a They have no apple. taste at all. No. They have no flavor. But the apples of before, they had remarkable taste. You know, that's what I noticed about the Philippines, like the bananas here. Yep. They have so much more flavor. These bananas you won't find in markets around other places. This is a small yeah, I've only seen them here. Senorita, but it's loaded with the potassium and the magnesium and mm. all these things. So you eat three or four of these, you don't need to take these big pharma pills. You understand, Mark? Right, I do. And uh, you asked me of where else would I go? It would be Patagonia, and uh, and then uh, I got to give it a thought, I, I, mm. because uh, every place is very political now. And I don't like politics. I like more, you know, a relaxed way of life. Uh, me too. Me too. And I that's agree with you I, there. I greatly look forward to that. But Patagonia is high on the list. It's mm. way down there in the southern parts mm. of, the, of the South American country. Mm. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. It's wide open spaces. You've I've, been there? Too? Yeah, I've been there, yeah. Did I you remember, like it I loved it. Yeah, I remember seeing a, a, a uh, elephant seal on the Rio beach Rio down there. So way down there. Yeah. Uh, in the bottom a lot of wilderness. Wilderness there, that's beautiful. Where the Indians come from. I mm. think that's their original. The alpacas are down there? The alpacas, yeah. the, uh, the llamas are up for it, but it's beautiful country. The Estacias, that's a, a, like a sheep ranch. The next one will be 50 miles away. Mm. So they're scattered very wide areas. Mm. And so plains. if you went to, to one of those places, Patagonia or Chile, would you all this stuff you pack it up and ship it there? That's the try. That's the thing, Mark. We can't in life adhere to uh, to Possessions. our material things. This gives beauty and purpose and identity. But you brought a lot of this stuff from all the way from New York, didn't you? I did take some things, but I couldn't. I left 90% behind because I've traveled the world. Mm. But when you say, what would I do? I would let somebody else enjoy this and take go on with it after I'm gone mm. because I couldn't uh, take it with me. But there are things there that I would then enjoy in that locality. But at your age, though, like you bought this huge table for a lot of money. And did you buy it just because it's beautiful and you don't I have any plans for it? The beauty of the wood. I love wood. Got it. I understand, yeah. Wood to me, if this was plastic, steel, or glass, it would not interest me. Right. Uh, I know it would be Art Deco or whatever you call it, but wood has an originality. Mm. It has a semblance of nature mm. uh, inspiring uh, into humanism. So that's right. why wood is transferred Humanity would, we come from the same source. It's organic, it's not synthetic, mm. and it gives light that adheres to life. Mm. Can you hear what I'm saying? I do. You know, I've been, I've been all over the world, and I've never seen quality like this of a table anywhere. Well, it's just spectacular. Here too. Now, this is made in the Philippines. Look at all the little shells. Oh, yeah. Them, Mark. You see the beauty of workmanship yeah. here. So the Filipinos are capable of very many beautiful things also. Stunning. You see all these yeah. little shells, Mark? I find those all, when I see those all the time when I'm snorkeling, those little shells. Yeah, but here someone took the time to put them all together into a beautiful yeah. work of art. Yeah. See? So we have objects that come from many var varieties, various yeah. areas of the world. Yeah. 
How about the vases you've got up there on top? Where do those, those come are from? Those are the rare uh, vases that I acquired out of Asia years ago. This is back in the... Uh, How old do you think they are? Oh, these go back. They're very old. And uh, they go back many, many years, Mark. These are hundreds of years old. What country are they from? Uh, basically, Asia and Southeast Asia. Oh, they're beautiful. And then, too, I like uh, some of the Western, the Western uh, regions, too, Mark. You can find Rosenthal China. Oh, one of the thanks. finest German uh, porcelain makers in the world. Hmm. Rosenthal with gold leaf uh, plating and has the mark of the Rosenthal stamp on the back of it. You see that? Yeah. Rosenthal, Germany. This is about, this is from 1950. No kidding. And this goes back, it's over half, 70 years old. Wow. That's Rosenthal. I have a set, some of it has been stolen, not much of it, so I have about half a set of that there. Hmm. Rosenthal uh, dish there. And, uh, and then right over here, you can see what it is in Siberia. I love the waters of Lake Baikal, Baikal Pearl. Mm. These waters come from the deepest lake in the world, oldest and deepest lake, that's Lake Baikal. I heard about that lake. And I drank that water, I love the water, it's not chemically uh, treated. And I've been on the lake, I've been out on the lake on boats on it, and I've seen their freshwater seal, the only place in the world they have a freshwater seal. I didn't seal. know there was a freshwater There's seal. There's a freshwater seal on the lake of Baikal. It's Did over, not know that. It's I... over 450 miles long and maybe 200 miles wide. Never heard that. It's Lake Baikal. It has about 280 rivers flowing into it, and it's got one river going out, the Angara River, and the city of Irkutsk is on the mouth of the Angara River, and that's the the outlet to Lake of Lake Lake. Travel there at least once in your lifetime. Don't believe propaganda that the Russians are going to eat you up. Go over there and enjoy the Siberian, the beauty of Siberia. And visit Lake Baikal, drink this water, and you will find one of the finest waters. Here, Baikal water here. These are glass bottles, by the way, not plastic. Baikal, Baikal, Baikal. Mm. Now, I've been to Russia, and everybody was very friendly to me when I was there. Very friendly people, and then, Mark, you've got, uh, you've got to realize that, uh, that the world is also, uh, you know, Russia is, is a great country. I recommend you to visit it. Don't yeah. let the boys... I've been to St. Petersburg several times. Did you like it? I loved it. One of the most beautiful cities in the world, isn't mm. it? Now, also, the water from Italy called Fiuji. I have a bottle of Fiuji. So oh yeah, I've heard of that. Fiuji is one of the springs of Italy, a beautiful spring around central Italy that the Italians, I love Chianti wine, Mark. You see the Chianti? Yeah, I do too. Rufino Chianti, it's an old Chianti. But uh, I strongly recommend that you, uh, you get, this is one of the Philippines' best uh, rum. Philippines is maybe the third leading sugar countries of the world. And they have uh, rum. Rum comes from sugar. And this is one of their finest rums. This mm. is Don, I've never seen that one. This is called uh, Don Papa. Now you look at this rum, Mark, and when you take a look at this rum here, if you like rum, you'll see Don Papa. Hmm. It's a very good Philippine rum. Hmm. It's over 10 years old. And uh, it's just probably better superior to the Jamaican rums in the southwest, mm. the central Caribbean area, because mm. the Philippines is, was the leading sugar country until it was replaced. That's by why the Coca-Cola here has real sugar and not corn syrup like they have in America. That's right. That's and right. it tastes way better. It tastes better, yes. So that, that is one of the finest mm. rums in the world, Don Papa. Mm. Uh, you can get that in the Philippine uh, native handicraft store where they sell that. Uh, and then uh, the other things that are made here, this is from Kalkal. These are Philippine products. What is it? Is this liquor? This. It's a liqueur. Oh, liqueur. And then one of their famous wines. It's a very, very good wine. Mm. One of the great uh, bottles. 
This is, uh, this one. let me show you this here. Because you are people. You are people. Let me mm. show this to you. Show you what Philippine products are, man, because a lot of people are ignorant of what the Philippine Well, they think you can't get quality things here. I'm you sorry? hear that a lot. People think you can't get quality products here. No, they think that this is a very, very, but they do have something, and I want to show this to you. Just give me one second while I dig this out. Okay. And I'm going to get that for you. Let's see. Here. If you're lovely here would know what Duhat is. Duhat is a fruit and they make a wine, it's like a cherry wine, hmm. very delicious, and the price of this was 200 pesos. Really? And 200 pesos roughly is about $4. $4. And this is a Philippine product, and it's not uh, it's not exported. They don't have enough of it, but I recommend you to go and get. I'll try some of that for and sure. Try some yeah. of that, Mark, and then I'll show you another one because I know you might not be interested. But let me just show you. I am interested. Are you? Yeah, I like wine. Okay, so you're interested in the do not and then let me show you something else. Got now this is another one, Mark. This is called Bugnai, Big Nai Wine. Mm. This is another from Berries of the Philippines. Huh. Filipinos, very, not many of them know this because they're into the Coca-Cola world. Yeah. They've been brainwashed. Mm. But this is very good, these products. I recommend you to go and get it. I forgot the price of this, but I don't think you can, I think you can afford it. <laughs> this one cost four dollars, and I don't know this one, but Big Nye wine, hmm. delicious wine. I recommend you get some. I'll of that. definitely check it out for sure. See that? These are Philippine-made, Philippine hmm. products. Not many farmers uh, get into that. See, I've been buying imported stuff. I got to start I buying think the Philippine. You know about this? This is the San Miguel. Oh beer. yeah, everybody it's knows about that. Rated a beer contest of the ten best beers in the world. No American beer is placed in that ten. Philippine beer came in in the, in the top ten. Yeah, San Miguel's good beer. This I is really one of the ten best. It, it rated number ten on the world huh. scale, huh. but it's the best beer. And you can get it anywhere here, and it's cheap. So these are products of the market that you have to uh, you have to uh, appreciate get into because uh, uh, life is very short, and you want to uh, adhere to uh, to what the local people drink. Hmm. Don't. Don't you be brainwashed into that the Philippines has nothing of quality because they do have things that are very substantial and delicious. Mm. I know you're bored by me showing you. I'm not bored. No, no I'm not. Uh, I, I'm sorry that I might be. Am I taking your time? You see that? This is this is a different uh, company. Mm. They might make it a little differently. This one says here now that it's 200 pesos. There's a four dollar bottle of uh, mm. berries, natural, no chemicals, no pesticides, mm. no California uh, cancer causing uh, material. Mm. They're great products of the Philippines. Mm. You never knew about this. Never knew about 90 it. Ninety percent of foreigners don't know about these two because they're into the Coca-Cola. I had market. no clue they even made wine here. I'm sorry? I had no clue that they even made wine this, here. This is made here, Mark. Right. This is that's why it's so good to have you as a friend, John. I learn so much every time I talk to you. Well, I hope I'm not taking your You're not taking my time. No, I came to see you I'm today. I'm trying to show you, Mark, that there are, there are things that you have to be uh, very aware of. And that uh, this is another one, Mark. Now we have Lumbai. Hmm. Lumboy. This is Lumboy. See? Lumboy. Oh. She knows Lumboy. Yeah. Yeah. Your lovely will know Lumboy. Hmm. She, had, she acknowledged it right away. Mm -hmm. This is another, and this cost 200 pesos a bottle. Mm -hmm. That's $4. Now, you've got four products there. I know you probably will never see this again. You don't No, I'm going to go look for them. I don't know if you will be interested in getting that. I am. I highly recommend before your life is over to try some of this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go look for them. Some of the greatest wines in the world. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Life is too short. Try different things and 
experience life. I agree. Do you agree? I agree 100%. And we're going to shortly get into our uh, Every Man Has a Story. Okay. This is down there. There's a big bridge mm -hmm. connecting Stalingrad to an area uh, on the Volga River there. It's a lovely painting. And she painted this and she gave this to me. Mm -hmm. This is a lady from Stalingrad, Russia. How long ago was that? That was about five years ago. Oh. She loved this. Uh, she loved Spain, and she said she'd never been there, but she loved it, and the dances and the. It's a really good painting. Isn't it good, Mark? Yeah, I mean, I sold art for a while. That's a very good painting. And I want to show you. You got that? Yeah. Here's another one I want to show you. I bought a diamond ring once for my uh, intended, mm. and I lost it. And oh, then no. Someday, at one time, there was a. Uh, Notices on the trees, found diamond ring, call uh, for the owner of the lost diamond ring and describe it. I called up and she said, please describe it. And I did. She said, can you please come to my studio? Hmm. And I said, yes. And she says, I'm an artist, I paint. Hmm. And this lady... What an honest person. Yes. She's a wonderful lady, Daryl Bryant, hmm. D-A-R-R. -R so where was the studio at? This is in California, B-R-Y-A-N-T. She mm. painted this, she says, I says, you know what, Daryl, keep the ring. I gave her the diamond ring huh. that I had bought mm. for, my, for an intended, and I said, since you're the most honest person I've ever found, I want you to keep that ring. Oh, nice. And she said, no, and it took me a while to, in her little studio, mm. She says, John, I can't take it. I says, I live out in the Philippines. Just say a prayer for me. And she says, all right, John, for you. She kept the ring. And she said, take this. And she made a painting, and she did that. Mm. I went back a couple of years ago to see her, and they said, Daryl died of brain cancer. Oh, no. And her husband, who was a real estate uh, uh, agent, a real estate uh, agent, or, the realtor, he, yeah. Real, realtor. Yeah. He told me, he says, remember Daryl, John. Mm. This painting is from Daryl Bryant. If you get a chance, research, because they told me that her paintings are going to become very known someday. Well, watercolor is a very difficult medium to work in, because with oil or acrylic, you can go back and correct a mistake. But with watercolor, you one drop goes in the wrong place. No, it's ruined. You can't go back and fix it. It's got to be perfect. And she told me she used to go to Italy every year. And up in the northern part, in Tuscany, she saw this beautiful old church and cows grazing. And in Tuscany, where she went quite mm. frequently every year, spent mm. a month or two painting, she did this in the Tuscany region of Italy. Daryl Bryant, a mm. wonderful lady that died of brain cancer mm. maybe seven years ago or so. Mm. Nice. Do you have that? Yeah, I got it. The other lady. Yeah.